What are corn dogs? <laughs> Cheap sausages dipped in butter and deep fried. You know, American. American food is sometimes made fun of by foreigners. To be honest, in some cases, we can't really blame them. So on that note, here are 10 American foods that baffle foreigners. It's a disgusting American food. Chicken and waffles. TJ, thank God you're here. How'd you find me? It's the only chicken and waffle place in all of Holland. Okay, hating on chicken and waffles is practically a crime. A mix of crispy, sweet, and salty all rolled into one delicious dish? What's not to love about that? From coast to coast and for generations, chicken and waffles have been a southern comfort staple beloved by Americans for ages, and we wouldn't trade it for anything. However, when someone from outside of the U.S. tries or even hears about the chicken waffle combination, they just don't seem to understand the hype. To an outsider, pairing crispy fried chicken with a waffle along with some melted butter slathered in syrup and gravy is simply not the way to go. No, I don't want it. I want it if you don't want it. Many foreigners have reported finding the combo weird, unappetizing, and downright repulsive, comparing it to mixing tuna and chocolate. Most say they like a good piece of chicken and fancy a waffle, but can't fathom why anyone would want to put the two together. Obviously, we're not going to let these opinions affect our love for chicken and waffles because, well, it's just too darn good to stop eating. You can have this mouth-watering, delectable dish for any meal of the day, and it will satisfy all your cravings at once, every single time. Oh, so delicious. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hershey's chocolate. We didn't get the whole chocolate bar, but we got a Hershey's kiss. I'll take it. This one shouldn't come as much of a surprise, because as much as we love our Hershey's chocolate bars, there are so many other quality, fine chocolates around the world that we have yet to experience. Comparing our generic brand to one of these would simply be unfair, especially since most of us haven't even tried half of the world's chocolate. Nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that foreigners do not seem to appreciate Hershey's chocolate. Indeed, most foreigners have claimed that Hershey's chocolate bars taste like <clears throat> vomit. Yeah, not the most appetizing description, that's for sure. It's disgusting. Yes, it is. But disgusting in a really great way. The reason why someone might pick up the unpleasant taste is that Hershey's uses butyric acid in its chocolate, which is also found in, well, vomit. Oh, and in Parmesan cheese as well. Because of the acid, the chocolate has a little tanginess, which foreigners say gives the chocolate a very unpleasant taste. But even beyond that very graphic description of taste, foreigners in general just say Hershey's chocolate is bad quality and is nothing compared to what they deem real chocolate. Whatever others think, Hershey's chocolate bars are here to stay. Sure, it might not be the highest of quality, but who cares? We love it. We love it! We love it! Corn dogs. Three corn dogs for 99 cents. Who could possibly eat three corn dogs and have a dollar? Corn dogs are another concept no foreigner seems to be able to support or even comprehend. Corn dogs have been the star of our amusement parks, carnivals, and baseball games for what seems like forever and have always been a delicious treat that can be enjoyed at any given time. A hot dog covered in cornmeal batter and deep fried to perfection is already pretty cool, but put it on a stick and you have got yourself one genius and convenient invention. But just because we feel like corn dogs are genius doesn't mean other people think the same way. In fact, most foreigners are a bit freaked out by corn dogs. Ah! Stewie, relax. No, Brian, you keep that thing away from me. How could a hot dog be on a stick and still be edible is a question that is frequently asked by foreigners seeing the junk food classic for the first time. The answer is pretty straightforward. You need to try one to see what the fuss is about. Yes, it's junk food, and eating junk food is not high on the list for some, but no one should ever feel shame when eating a corn dog. It's more than just fried dough on a stick, it's an American icon. You simply can't walk past a corn dog stand without getting the urge to get one, whether it's because of a craving or nostalgia. Any reason is good enough to indulge in a corn dog. Before calling it disgusting, everyone should at least give one a try. It's delicious. Sweet potato casserole. Holy casserole!
What's the one classic dish that somehow always winds up on many Americans' Thanksgiving tables? That's right, a sweet potato casserole, the ultimate mix of fluffy candy and a starchy root vegetable. From an outside perspective, once again, we can kind of understand that sweet potato casserole might seem a little kooky. But in its defense, this dish has been a tradition for decades, and we've grown quite fond of the marshmallow-slash-potato mix. The first ever recipe for this casserole was featured in an early 1900s cookbook commissioned by Angelus Marshmallows, one of the first candy companies to sell sweets at reasonable prices. It was originally an effort to get Americans to use marshmallows in their everyday cooking. And let's just say, once we got a taste of it, we were immediately hooked. What is this glutinous monstrosity before me? Foreigners, however, can't seem to fully wrap their heads around the concept of pairing marshmallow and potatoes together. We've been called many names for eating sweet potato casserole in the first place, but we don't care. We're going to keep preparing this iconic dish every Thanksgiving to keep the tradition alive. We'll eat it alongside our cranberry sauce because that's just how we roll. That's how we roll in our house, baby. Pop-Tarts. Who wants Pop-Tarts? What's something you quickly grab from the pantry when you're in a rush in the morning but don't want to skip breakfast? A good old packet of Pop-Tarts, the greatest, most sugary breakfast you could ever have, but also one of the tastiest. Coming in a variety of flavors, Pop-Tarts are always there to provide nostalgic childhood memories and comfort us in bad times. However, these nostalgic feelings are, unfortunately, not equally shared by everyone. Maybe it's because of the sugar overload of the pastries in the morning, or maybe it's the even sweeter filling with a supposed weird consistency. But whatever it is, foreigners do not want to jump on the Pop-Tart bandwagon at all. You don't want to eat it? This little silver wrapper does not bring as much joy to them as it does to us. Instead, it brings up health concerns and the urge to throw them away. We guess it's fair, it's not everyone who enjoys a sugary breakfast, but we sure as heck do. Plus, Pop-Tarts are so beloved. Even when junk food sales started to decline, Pop-Tart sales were still soaring. Perhaps they just haven't found the right flavor yet. Brown sugar and cinnamon should lead them in the right direction. Now I'm finally on the right path. Root beer. A root beer fixes everything. Americans hold soda in very high regard. It might not be the best thing for our health, but a nice cold glass of sparkling sugar once in a while is always appreciated. Root beer in particular is a true gem of American culture and also one of the most hated sodas by foreigners. But how can you love Coca-Cola yet hate root beer with a passion? It's all about the ingredients it's made with. While some greatly appreciate the taste of licorice and wintergreen mixed together, others find it weirdly reminiscent of cough syrup, and with good reason. You see, root beer was originally made from sassafras, which is often used in medicines in many other countries. And, well, it's fair to say that people in general don't find the taste of medicine to be a very appealing one. If you've ever been forced to swallow spoonfuls of cough syrup as a kid, you'll understand where this root beer hatred comes from. It was cough syrup. Even though root beer is no longer made with real sassafras due to health concerns, there is still a sassafras-like flavoring from a saffron-free extract, which gives off the same sickly taste to those not used to root beer. Oh, and foreigners also have a lot to say about the amount of ice we put in our soda, but to be honest, there's nothing better than an ice-cold glass of root beer on a hot summer day. Root beer is super water. Grits. Ooh, we're sharing some grits. Grits have been a sacred staple on every southern table for ages and are one of the classic American dishes that shouldn't be messed with. While they were born in the South, grits have been able to win the hearts of almost everyone across the country. However, foreigners don't see grits in the same way. Made from white corn, the texture of grits has been compared to a lot of inedible things such as tiny rocks and even wallpaper paste by foreigners. Now, don't say that to any avid grits fan. Those could be fighting words. That's it! You're asking for a woman. While it's true that if you don't cook your grits properly, you might end up with a pretty rocky consistency since the corn is still hard. But if you know what you're doing and you pair them with the right seasoning, you simply can't go wrong. And when they're infused with cheese, it's like heaven on earth. So next time you come across a foreigner who claims to hate grits, just make sure they try the right kind and give them something to change their minds. 
This is actually really good. Sliced bread. We are going to be the best thing since sliced bread. Sometimes you don't know what you're missing until you try it. And apparently, we've been missing out on real bread our entire lives. At least that's according to most foreigners who try our sliced bread for the first time. For an American, the best thing since sliced bread is, well, sliced bread. But for someone who grew up on genuine baguettes and buns their whole life, it's a travesty. If you walk into any American grocery store, you will find the bakery section filled with dozens of different kinds of bread already sliced and packaged for the perfect quick and easy sandwich or to pop in the toaster. It's basically an ingenious invention designed to save some time, all the while enjoying a versatile snack. Time is money, peaches. The concept of sliced bread just doesn't seem to really stick with foreigners, claiming we don't know what real bread is. Words like bland, boring, and even too sweet have often been used to describe how other people see our beloved sandwich maker. And while sliced bread isn't exactly the most flavorful option out there, it can still hold its own in certain situations. Just add some deli meats and a bunch of veggies along with a slice of cheese and you have got yourself the sandwich of a lifetime. Plus, all those fancy loaves and baguettes require the extra step of slicing. And frankly, who has the time for that? Ain't nobody got time for this. Peanut butter. Oh, look at little Laura Ingalls eating that peanut butter sandwich. Peanut butter? Speaking of things that go great with sliced bread, peanut butter is another American classic that doesn't sit right with a lot of foreigners. Honestly, how can anyone hate peanut butter? Aside from those who are allergic, of course. It can be eaten in a sandwich, with apple slices, heck, it can even make celery acceptable. Spread generously on a piece of toast in the morning or enjoyed shamelessly by the spoonful, peanut butter is the ultimate morning starter. So why is the love for the spread not shared by the rest of the world? Well, mostly because they don't think it actually makes anything taste better, or that it even tastes good on its own for that matter. Our food is often criticized as being too salty, too sweet, or even too mushy. And in the case of peanut butter, it's a combination of all three. And that's why we go crazy for the stuff. It's wet oil in your mouth and in the driest food known to man <laughs> all at the same time. It's salty and sweet at the same time and brings a nice smooth to whatever you put it on. More than 90% of American homes keep a jar of peanut butter in the pantry, and about three pounds is eaten per person every year. Go outside of North America, and you are guaranteed to have a much harder time getting your hands on a jar. France, Italy, Sweden, and Japan are some examples of places where peanut butter is not welcome. A little piece of advice. If you're a peanut butter nut and you're traveling abroad, it might be a good idea to stick a jar or two in your suitcase. You know, just just in case. Babe, did you pack the sriracha peanut butter? Two bottles. How about Dave's potato noodles? It's all in there. American cheese. I will buy you some cheese. Low fat cheese. Low fat cheese. Low fat American cheese. Yet another sandwich favorite that won't receive the stamp of approval from anyone outside of the US is American cheese. For this particular item, however, we can kind of see where the dislike is coming from. Let's just say our bright neon orange cheese isn't exactly the most natural kind of cheese out there. After all, it is illegal to even label it as real cheese, but still, we love it. Our grilled cheese and tomato soup lunches would not be the same without the questionable yet familiar color of milk. American cheese. While we may like to slap a slice on just about anything, especially burgers, most foreigners will agree the stuff tastes like plastic. It's pretty understandable, really, since it contains so many additives. Oh well, maybe it's an acquired taste, or maybe they simply forgot to take the wrapper off. Of course, you can't talk about American cheese without mentioning the one and only Cheese Whiz. Can I get some cheese whiz or hollandaise? No. To be fair, even here, cheese whiz does not have the biggest vote of confidence either. According to foreigners and some Americans, cheese whiz not only tastes like plastic, but also comes with potential health issues. That's not going to make you want to dip your crackers in it. Even though every country has its own cheese-making traditions and specialties, we can't really claim that American cheese slices are the best of the best. It looks like we still have some work to do in the cheese department. Ooh, we, we have to fix it. Stay for seconds and tap or click another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.